What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Basically Bungie just dropped a post addressing the issues many people have spoke out about over the past week, basically since the Curse of All Souls DLC came out. If you didn't know, if you didn't purchase the Curse of All Souls DLC, you were locked out of Trolls of the Nine, you were locked out of Heroic Strikes, the Prestige Raids, Faction Rallies and so forth. Now Faction Rallies was supposed to come tomorrow but they've postponed that due to an update which is coming next week which is fixing all of the issues people have spoke up about. Now this post is quite long so bear with me I'm going to read you through it all and give you my opinions on it. Okay, so stay in Bungie here. With the Curse of Osiris now live, it's clear that we've made some mistakes with how we've handled content access. We would like to talk through the reasoning behind our decisions so far and what we can made to changing moving forward. The Destiny Endgame features a variety of activities and playlists that we want to remain relevant to players as they grow more powerful. In Destiny 1, as your character grew more powerful, throughout each expansion, some of our best content like the Vault of Glass were left behind and it lost its relevance for players. We wanted a better solution for Destiny 2, where all of our in-game activities could stay relevant as each expansion causes your Guardian to grow more and more powerful. The following were our goals when we separated Normal and Prestige modes. The Normal Leviathan Raid and the Normal Nightfall would always stay at a power level that was accessible to all players. Prestige difficulty would always rise to the new power cap. It could be the pinnacle of challenge with the most prestigious rewards, but it therefore would require you to own the latest expansion and be at the new power cap. Additionally, the game provides seasonal, time-limited PvP playlists, Trials of the Nine and Iron Banner. These activities and their rewards are meant to evolve each season, and they utilize new maps, so they would require you to own the latest content. To play the latest season of Iron Banner or Trials and earn new rewards, players would need to own the Curse of Osiris. We've heard from the community that both these plans aren't working. The Prestige Raid was a novel experience that players value, even if they don't own Curse of Osiris, and it was a mistake to move their experience out of reach. Throughout the lifetime of the Destiny franchise, Trials has always required that players own the latest expansion. However, for Destiny 2, Trials and 9 launched as part of the main game, so it's not right for us to move access to it. To make matters worse, our team overlooked the fact that both of these mistakes disabled trophies and achievements for Destiny 2. This was an unacceptable lapse on our part and we can understand the frustration it has created. Therefore this week we will release a hotfix that will make the following changes. The Prestige Leviathan Red will be brought back down to a power 300 and its rewards will drop down to match the new power level. All players will regain access to the Prestige Red. This will allow access to the Prestige Achievement Trophies for all players. This will also allow all players ability to complete the final step of the Legend of Accurus Exotic Shotgun. Trials and Nine will only require Curse of All when it features on a Curse of Osiris map. For all of the weeks it will be available to all players. This will allow access to release the Be Judged achievement trophy for all players. Trials and Nine rewards that launch with Destiny 2 will still be accessible to all players. New seasonal rewards that launch with Curse of Osiris such as the new seasonal armor ornaments will require ownership of the Curse of Osiris to acquire. The Prestige Nightfall will remain a pinnacle activity at the new 330 power cap. This means Prestige Nightfall will require ownership of the Curse of Osiris. Because of this, we will update the Prestige Achievement Trophies to only reference the Prestige Raid. Moving forward, we are investigating adding a third difficulty to all Prestige activities so that we can provide both a challenge that stays relevant with each new expansion and a prestige version that is available to all players. Normal Nightfall will only require Curse of Osiris when it features on a Curse of Osiris map. For all other weeks it will be available to all players. Time limited events. Iron Banner, Faction Rally and the Dawning will be made available to all players. We will be postponing tomorrow's Faction Rally to ensure all of our players can access the activity and the appropriate rewards. Iron Banner and Faction Rally rewards that launch with Destiny 2 will still be accessible to all players. New seasonal rewards that launch with the Curse of Osiris, such as the new seasonal armor ornaments, will require ownership of the Curse of Osiris to acquire. We expect these changes to go live at the end of the scheduled maintenance to deploy update 1.1.1.1. Moving forward, we are also looking to improve on heroic strikes, with new challenges, new modifiers and free access for all players. Thank you for your patience and feedback as we work to continuously improve the Destiny 2 experience.
So what a F up on their behalf. I mean, me personally, I was seriously looking forward to faction rallies tomorrow. I didn't know until this actual update that everybody who didn't purchase the DLC was cut from it. They wouldn't be able to play it. I knew about heroic strikes and I knew about the prestige raid. But even so, I mean, that is one of the scummiest moves I've ever seen from any, and I mean from any game developer ever. And I will say, it, I will straight up say it. Cutting people out of base game content which they purchased is absolutely shocking, it really is. I mean it physically angers me, it boils my blood. Sitting here recording this video, my face is bright red. You guys will be glad my webcam is turned off. I just don't get it, I don't get what were they thinking. It seems to me like they just turned into a money driven company. I mean obviously yes they want to earn money for their game but put us first, put the community first. That is definitely not how it feels, not in my opinion anyway. And as a result of their cock up, so many so many things will be changing. I mean it makes sense that the prestige of the and raid has been brought back down to a power level 300 as that was a part of the base game content which people purchased. Bungie actually taking that away from people uh, who purchased the base game just like Trials is absolutely shocking. So I can understand that decision and to be honest the only way they could actually counter that is like they say looking into adding a third difficulty which will be only accessible to players who do purchase the latest expansion who are able to reach that top level. I just don't agree on them locking people out of the game. I mean, I just don't get it. I don't get what they're thinking. If you don't purchase the DLC, you can't play Heroic Strikes, something which was part of the base game of Destiny 1. If you don't purchase the DLC, you can't play Trials of the Nine, something which was available to the base game purchase. If you don't purchase the DLC, you can't play the Prestige Nightfall or Raid. Something which was available when you purchased the base game. I mean, I just don't get what they were thinking here. Surely, and I mean surely, they would have known this would cause an uproar. Now another thing which kind of does annoy me here, which we will talk about, is the Prometheus Lens. Now, I've never had more fun in PvP in my entire life. I mean, it's, it, you know what it is? It reminds me of Mayhem, because that's what it is. It's just absolute carnage, and it's super, super fun. Now, we knew a nerf was coming this Tuesday. That was obviously on the table. They'd already said that. But they recently tweeted this, as Laser Tag Weekend comes to a close, we're making good on our promise to address the fact that the Prometheus Lens is way too powerful. Sure, it's fun, but it breaks the crucible for anyone who wants to use a different weapon. Given the short window we had to make an emergency fix, it will be adjusted to be way too weak. In January, this new exotic will receive a proper play-tested design pass. Now there's a few things that I just don't get here people and it, it leaves me with questions about the people behind this game. So you're telling me they designed an exotic weapon, they just threw that at us, they threw it into the game without giving it a proper playtest? Did they actually do that? So you're telling me nobody at Bungie took this into PvP and tried it out before they allowed everybody to use it? Is that not like top of a list of something you have to do before you release weapons into the game? Before you make weapons available in the game? I thought for a playtest were in place. What is going on people? Someone explain to me. I mean you can't defend this. Anyone who tries to defend this are just blind. They really are. I watched Skillup's video. If you haven't watched it you should definitely check it out. You know what I'll link it in the video description. He basically reviews Destiny 2 and after watching it and reading this and seeing what they've released today it's hard not to see Destiny 2 from a standpoint of how he views it. So yes, my one issue with this statement about the Prometheus Lens is the fact that they basically admitting that they don't play test weapons properly, uh, so yeah. But the other issue I've got is, isn't there a system in place where they can easily adjust weapons? Weren't this the excuse behind not adding random rolls to weapons in the game? What happened to that? I'm pretty sure this is what they stated. Another great reason for lock perks on individual weapons is the fact that they can go back and adjust one weapon really easy. So why can't they do that? Why can't they do that with Prometheus Lens? Why can't they just copy and paste what the Cold Heart does to the Prometheus Lens? Why can't they just take down its damage a bit? Why can't they just reduce its damage by half? What happens to this new system, this new feature they have in place where they can easily adjust individual weapons without breaking the whole archetype? Was that just another excuse they put out to us to be lazy in not giving us random rolls on weapons? Who knows? But yeah guys, I'm slowly slowly losing confidence in Bungie as a game developer. I really am. And on that note people, 
I am out. I can't do it no more. I'm too tired. But let me know what you think about this down below within that comment section. Thanks as always for stopping by. I appreciate you stopping to the end if you have. And I will see you on that next one, hopefully. Always in the wrong. Knowing where we stand. But you and I. Get it right